In this video, I'm going to continue on our learning Cricut Design Space um, videos and teaching some of the basics. And this is Design Space. This is early October 2015. So this version was released a couple of weeks ago in September 2015. And some things have changed. So I'm going to, uh, in this video, cover uploading and cleaning up images. And so in Design Space, on the left, we're going to click Upload Images. And you have two types of upload. You can upload an image or a pattern fill. And for the purpose of this video, we're going to upload an image. And you can upload JPEGs, GIFs, PNGs, or BMPs, which are flat file types. And then you can also upload SVGs or DXF files, which have paths and that can also have layers. So um, if for the purpose of this video, we're going to upload a uh, JPEG and a PNG and show you how to clean those up. One of the things that's probably important for me to mention is that it's important that you understand image resolutions and dimensions when you're working with imported images and cleaning them up. I have another video on my channel uh, called How to Properly Clean Up and Import Images that I'll put a link to uh, on the screen right now and you can click on it and watch it. And that will explain what the, some of the things you need to know about image resolution and dimensions because if you import images that are very high resolution or ones that are cleaned up very poorly, it can cause you a lot of problems, especially with shockwave plugin errors. So we're gonna click the upload button we're going to browse to our folder. So here we have two different images. I'm going to first import the duck.png file. And as you can see, the file has a transparent background, as you can see by this checkerboard that's around it. And so I'm going to select that this is a simple image because it is a simple black uh, outline image. And uh, I'd rarely use, uh, for myself, I rarely use the moderately complex image. I usually use either simple or complex. So complex would be more for things that have shading and photographs and things of that nature. So in this case, we're going to choose simple image and click continue. And then you can see the image and we can zoom out a little bit. And if we want to see how this can cut, we can just simply click preview. And it will show us the image as it would cut the outline. And that looks all uh, clean and everything. I don't see any extra marks or pixels around it, anything like that. So I can now click continue. And I have the choice of saving it as a print then cut image or saving it as a cut image only. If you save it as print then cut, you do have the option to change it to a cut in the uh, layers panel. So I usually do so even though it's uh, you know, with this type of image, I'm more than likely only ever going to cut it. Uh, but I go ahead and save it as print and cut image, and I'll show you how to change it. And of course, you can name your image and also give it some tags, which will make it easier to find using the search function. And next, we'll select our image. And if you ever want to delete an image that you've uploaded, you can click the little I down here in the corner and then click the delete button. And you also can see the image number that your image has been assigned, and you can search by that as well. So I have my image selected, and if I select more than one image, you can see that it puts uh, the list of images that you've selected down here. And if you change your mind, you can just click on one and get rid of it. And then we'll click Insert Images. And now we have it on our design canvas. And over here on the Layers panel, you see that by default it is set to print because I did import it as a print then cut image. But if I want to cut it instead, I can just click this button and change it to Cut. And then if I click the Go button, you will see that it will uh, show the image and the path uh, along which it's going to cut as you would expect. So I'll cancel this one and we will now delete this and we'll go back and import the JPEG and I'll show you how to clean up an image on import. So we're going to click upload image again and we're going to browse to our folder and we're going to click this duck.jpg file and we're going to open it. And as you can see this is a uh, it only shows a certain preview. But this is actually a much larger file that has all this background and border around it. And it is still black and white, so I'm going to click Simple Image. Then when I click Continue, you will see that it is a much larger image than what we were working with on the previous uh, duck.png file. And the image is so large that you can't even see it all in the window. It looks like it's still working. But if I zoom out, you'll see there's our duck. And so there's a couple things I'm going to do to this. I'm going to first crop it down to where it's a little bit more manageable. So I'll click on the crop tool over here and I will position my cursor in a way that I can draw a box around it. And as soon as I let off my mouse, it's going to crop that image down. And now it's more like the size of the one we were just working with. 
Now you'll notice that we have a solid white background instead of that checkerboard pattern that you've seen earlier. So I'm going to click on my uh, magic wand to select an erase tool. And there's a couple of adjustments under here that you can use on some images. If you have a good, uh, decent resolution image that has a good solid border, you don't really need to change anything. Uh, the reduce colors function will allow you to get rid of some of the shading. If I were to zoom in really, really close along this edge, you would see that it, it is not a difference of black and white. It is actually white and black and in the middle are probably several shades of gray. And you can reduce the number of colors using this function. You rarely have to use this, though. If there were um, some other factors involved, like there were more shades and things like that, I can increase the color tolerance. And what this does is it makes a harder cutoff between the two uh, major colors. So if there were, say, 10 shades of gray, if I zoomed in really close, I could increase this to, um, say, 50 to 100. And the scale, if you could picture it, like in this shaded area, I'll use this as an example, from here to here, maybe 50 shades, and so it would erase, when I click this, it would erase this, and up to 50 levels away from that color. So uh, for a shaded area, this is how you can uh, adjust and get a cleaner cut around the edges. So if you do turn it up, generally it won't hurt, but you may have to play with it and adjust it down a little bit to get the final product that you want. So with the magic wand, I'm just going to simply click on the white area and you see that it removed it and uh, we have that nice clean checkerboard background which means it is transparent. Now however this one does have some words on it and we do not want to uh, use that. So um, you don't really want to use the magic wand to get rid of something like that because it can leave little remnants, little pixels around the edges and things. So what we're going to do is use the eraser tool and I can increase the size of the eraser and put it over here and see what it's going to look like. We may want it a little larger. And now I can simply use this to erase those additional pieces. And if I click Preview, I should have a nice clean preview, just like we did on the previous image we imported. And we do. It doesn't look like we have any stray pixels or anything. And again, we can save this as a print and cut or just a cut file. I'll go ahead and save this one as a cut image instead uh, since we already showed you how to change from print and cut and again you can name it and assign some tags to it and you can have multiple images named the same thing uh, in your uploaded images area because it assigns that image number to it so it doesn't matter if you have multiple images named the same unlike projects when you save your projects they do have to have different names for each one so if I click that image and insert it You'll notice over here in the Layers panel, it's already set to be a cut layer. And if I click the Go button, you will see that you have your outline that would cut out as expected. If my video has been helpful to you, please subscribe to my channel. And after you subscribe, be sure to click the little gear and check this box so that you'll receive an email notification when I upload a new video. You can also help support my channel by making a small donation on Patreon.com slash Troy Young.